I have an issue. Well, I guess I have multiple issues, but I have one issue that we're going to be addressing in this video today. And that is that overall, I want to do more battle reports here on the channel. But to do that, I need more models and more armies. So to address my main core issue, I thought that I would go out and buy a combat patrol. This one for the Eldari, Eldar, Space Elves, whatever you wish to call them. And I want to try and paint this as quickly as possible to a nice high standard, just so that I'm in a position that if I want to film a battle report, I am able to get the models out and start filming straight away. I spent the last couple of days building these models and I've decided on the Iandan scheme, which is the yellow armor with blue head pieces and accessories. And I want to try and make this something that I can paint rapidly, efficiently, and on a larger scale. So if I add models to the army, they look consistent and don't take me that long to get on the table. So I thought mainly due to the fact that I've only left myself a couple of days to actually get this painted, we'll try and compress this into a combat patrol painting challenge and I'll see how quickly I can get through this full box of 19 Eldar. For this combat patrol, I wanted to build them as instructed, no conversions here. However, as normal, we are going to be building these in sub-assemblies, which is my preferred way of painting if possible. And it did take roughly two evenings to put all of the models together. But by the end of that second evening, we had a fully built combat patrol and we can move on to the undercoating. So I decided to pick up a red spray can and give everything a nice undercoat then we can start to tackle that yellow armor. And to do that, it starts with a simple undercoat of a reddish brown. We can grab a cheap brush for this and essentially work around and apply a large base coat to all of the models. As per normal, we want to try and make this as clean as possible. So if we need to do two thinned coats, then we can do that and it will help out. However, if we are still slightly patchy after that second coat, don't worry about spending the extra time because any future steps will cover up any minor imperfections. These later steps do include firstly going over the base coat with a relatively heavy overbrush of a mid skin tone. This is very similar to a dry brush but uses more paint in the brush and what we'll do is drag the brush across the model leaving the brown in the recesses but applying a coat of the flesh color over the raised areas. This is similar to a dry brush, but generally puts down a slightly thicker coat. Talking of dry brushing, that's the next step. What we want to do is grab a lighter skin tone than we've just used, and then dry brush this over all of the textured areas on all of the models, like the warriors and things like that. There is one difference here, and one thing we will be doing differently, which is the larger flat panels on things like the fronts of the bikes. Rather than dry brushing these, which is possible because there isn't as many textured details, we can get a nicer look by just either stippling or sponging on the color rather than dry brushing. Essentially, the dry brushing will be used on the smaller things like the warriors and things like that, which have more smaller details that a dry brush will pick out. Larger flat panels are slightly harder while it is still possible. Using a stippling or a sponging method just streamlines that whole thing, which is the aim of today's game. And what we want to do is take a light flesh and then work around the models, picking out all of the most raised areas and the edges with a light flesh tone through edge highlighting. Once we've edge highlighted everything, we should hopefully have a nice transition from the reddish brown base coat up to this lighter highlight. We also gain the benefit of having nice clean edges on our models. Then it's just a simple case of tinting all of the work we've done so far into yellow. In the past, how I've done this is normally with inks, but for speed and availability, there are other products that can help with this too. Mainly, I'll be looking at speed paints and contrast paints. So we just want to pick up the color that we want to use for the army and apply a nice layer of this over everywhere on the armor. We will naturally need to monitor this to make sure that we don't have any heavy pooling. However, the advantage of using contrast as opposed to inks is contrast paints pool really well in the recesses. So where the recesses are this darker reddish color, they will be tinted yellow more as opposed to the surface areas which don't need as much tinting because they're a lighter color, which once it is dry gives us a nice yellow armor without a lot of work. With the armor done and looking better than if we just slapped some contrast paint, over a white base, we can move on to the weapons, which for the Iandan are black. We're going to start this off simple with a layer of Black Legion as a base coat. We can also take the time to pick out any of the joints on things like the walkers or anything else that we want black at this particular moment. Once our base coat of this black is dry, we're just going to do some simple edge highlights on the weapons. 
Starting with a rich blue, we can do a full edge highlight across all of the blacks, catching every single edge. This can then be followed up with a nice narrower edge highlight using a desaturated blue. And for these, what we want to do is catch essentially the edges of the edge. So where the edge highlight that we've done so far will be coming to a particular point, we can start halfway up, drag up to that point to give us a nice bright tip at the end of any highlights. With this all done and once it is all dry, we can finish off these areas with a simple black wash, which will help to harmonize these colors together and also darken down the black areas that we've done with Black Legion. Once this is dry, we should have the guns ready and sorted. They should be nice with black details and then this nice hue of edge highlighted blue, which naturally fits in with the scheme because we'll be using blue for other aspects of the helmet, things like that. So with that in mind, we have a couple other things that we need to talk to before we tackle one of the main hurdles, which is the sword on the Wraith Lord. Let's look at tackling those helmets, which is the largest blue sections on these models. And here we can start by applying an overbrush of a rich blue across the red undercoat that we applied on all of our models. We want to try and make sure that we have red in the recesses while all of the most upper raised areas get a nice coat of blue so that we have those upper surfaces are distinctly blue and not red. With this dry, we can then get out a pot of pale blue and use this to either dry brush or stipple the blue over all of the areas on the helmets before repeating the same step, either dry brushing or stippling, but this time using the light skin tone. This will give us a similar effect to what we had with the rest of the armor, except it's actually in a hue similar to where we're going giving us blue at the highest points and then red in the deepest points. And now, as I'm sure you can expect, we are going to be applying a simple contrast paint, this time blue, which will make the uppermost bluest areas remain blue. And then all of the red areas that we have undercoated will get tinted to a darker purple tone. Yes, contrast is what we will be applying. We apply it across all of the areas where we did the undercoating and pre-shading and we have blues on the model. This should mean there is no issue in getting a nice coverage of the area with a blue contrast. However, that is not the heads done. The Eldar have a mini faceplate, which is the color of their main armor. So what we want to do is take our yellow recipe that we used earlier and apply this to the face. But due to the size and the fact that we've just painted the blue, as opposed to dry brushing and stippling as we did before, at this point, I'm just going to sit down, spend a little bit of time and go round actually layering up these colors. Then it is just a case of moving on to paint a load of gems, and I mean a load. There are so many ways to paint gems and there are so many gems on these models, but I painted them all in a nice, simple way, which allows me to come back and touch them up later. How we did that was we applied the skin tone, the lightest skin tone to get a close to white base coat. And then we followed that up with a simple red contrast. Yes, contrast again kind of a theme in this speed video, I will admit. However, the advantage of this is we can then come back and fix this up later and do some more details if we wanna spend a little bit more time. This is a nice area that we can just add a little bit more. Mwah, beautiful. Anyway, with that said, that is how we did the gems. Let's move on to something a little bit more exciting. Yes, the sword on the right floor, something that can be slightly difficult to do occasionally, but here we're going to be painting it similar to the other weapons but we want a slight variance with this because it's a bigger, more central point of the army. So what we're going to be doing is wet blending it between a blue contrast that we've used for the helmet and the black contrast that we've used for the rest of the weapons. Putting these contrasts on the areas, we're opting to go blue at the tip and black at the base. So we put the contrasts in these areas, bring them together in the center and start to mix them until we have a nice transition from a black base blade all the way up to blue edges. This can then be followed up with an edge highlight. Going around with the rich blue that we've used, we can highlight every single edge. Once that's dry, we can then follow it up as we did with the other weapons, catching the edges of the edges with a desaturated bright blue. Overall, this is a nice simple way of getting the weapon sorted. We can spend a little bit more time doing some glazes if we want, but for a quick tabletop scheme and a combat patrol painted in two to three days, I'm quite happy with this. Once that last edge highlight is down, we have a fully painted combat patrol. And with that, it means that we can go out and we can start gaming. 
However, there is one thing that you've possibly noticed. I haven't painted the farce here. In fact, here he is, completely unpainted. Well, we undercoated, I guess, but the reason for that is I'm going to be doing another video where I do this scheme, but try and push it up a level for things like characters and centerpieces. So if that's interesting to you, you may want to keep an eye out for that video. This took me around nine hours to get everything painted and probably around three to four hours to get everything built. So overall, we're looking at around 13 hours so far and then chuck, say, two hours on for the farce here. Overall, I don't think that's too bad for a speed painted army that, in my opinion, looks quite good at a arm's length distance, which for a tabletop army of this sort of speed, I'm quite happy with, to be honest. Now, if you liked this and you want to see something like this, where I do lots of models in a short time span, check out this playlist here. Alternatively, if you want to see me paint individual models to a slightly higher level, such as we'll be doing with the Farseer, check out this playlist here. Alternatively, remember to subscribe so that we can see you next time.